undoubtedly this is when you talk about people who understand the differences. Originally, a piece of jalapeno pepper has what we call scola units of heat, and it's about 250 to 350,000. The next one that comes above that is the one that we would get into a habanero, which will get it to, let's say, you know, uh, in my eyes, normally it's about 450 to 300, I'm sorry, I guess it goes a little bit lower than I thought. Anyway, they're going into the, the 450 or 500,000 Skoger units that you could get out of there. But after that, when you get into the ghost pepper, now we're getting up to this. We start to crawl on the, the higher numbers and uh, it gets, we're starting to get up to this heat index that's, you know, three times greater or four times greater than where we started. And uh, then we can go from there to the to the scorpion, which will take it up another notch. And if you are really crazy, you can go to the Carolina Reaper, which absolutely gets you up to about 2.2 million scog units of heat. But it is what it is. The body of the cheese is nice. It will slice well. It'll do a lot of things well. But when it's on a piece of cheese, I'm sorry, when it's on it, when this piece of cheese is put onto a uh, burger, a burger, or a, you know something being cooked. It can do actually very, very well. Right. And it doesn't take, I mean, one of the things everybody has to keep in mind, uh, if you did a typical one ounce slice of this, it might be a little bit much, but this is a case where slice it, but slice it really thin and let it melt on. And maybe that half ounce slice is enough to deliver the the cheese flavor and the spicy flavor that you want out of a sandwich or shred that half ounce of cheese rather than an ounce of cheese onto a salad or a wrap. And um, I think Ken just left me to go get grab a beer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's definitely a nice piece of cheese. It's got a very creaminess to it. Um, it's like I said, it's my heat tolerance. When I when I go above this one, I'm about uh, I'm about at my absolute limit uh, right here. And uh, Michael, you said you were a little bit faint of heart on the uh, on the heat side of things. So what would you think? Well, you know, I was waiting because I didn't want to be making noises in the background. So <laughs> I haven't tried it. So this is my first attempt on this. Well, take and a I, small bit because it doesn't take much. I, I have to tell you that uh, I was judging at the World Cheese Awards back in 2012. And at the end of the table, we had this peppered cheese. And uh, come to find out, you know, then the judging, they don't tell you exactly what it is. They just give you a general thing. And we all tasted it. And it ended up being ghost pepper. And I have to tell you that we w went a little too far with the tasting. And uh, I, I swear I still taste it today from 2012. So I sliced this as thin as I could. But you have some beer there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a tongue. Mm. So I saved myself. Ah, a glass of milk will help you flame out. That'll be that'll be that's easier than the beer. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting. It wasn't that long ago that I had a a Zoom meeting with a, a customer that is south of the border, and I thought this would be just a natural for their stores, and they actually came back and said. We could sell it. It's good, but it's actually a little too spicy for us even down here. I'm thinking, what about the people that do Carolina Reaper and Scorpion? Because we do sell and we sell, sell a lot, a of, lot it. of it. Um, and when I'm at a trade show and I see people coming in, and we put a little warning sign on our table that just says taste with caution. And uh, of course at a trade show, most people eat and then read. Um, so it's always fun to see the reaction, but uh, you know, uh, I do have a bit of heat tolerance. So I can say 
I do appreciate the cheese base on this. It's very nice. It's whole, whole milk. It's creamy. It's melt well, uh, but it's also a flavor that's gonna gonna hang with you for a bit until you kind of consume a Mellow. few other things or drink a few other things, and and it'll go away uh, sooner than later for for others. Well, it it you can cool it down. With the first cheese, with being exactly. able to have did, a little yeah, bit of exactly. uh, the, yeah. the uh, go back to the, the marble jack does a wonderful thing. The feta also can help you kind of tame it. Um, of course, with the feta, you're going to fight a little bit with the with the flavors, but uh, yeah, just a, a whole milk cheese like the the marble jack will help you calm it down, or good old milk. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> well, luckily this will not go to waste. I have a friend that consumes uh, uh, ghost peppers by the uh, pound. So, oh my! He's, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, during this he called to ask whether or not it was done and he could come pick it up yet. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, in about a half an hour or so, he's going to come by and pick up his ghost pepper because it's just going to make us have make him so happy. Wonderful. Um, well, that was that was amazing. Uh, the, each of these cheeses, you know, I, I think uh, apart from just the natural part of the ghost pepper, but everything else having such a nice balance of flavors, you really did you do a great job on on getting that balance of of tasting the cheese and tasting the flavor and that one not becoming overpowering to the other one. And I, I really admire that because that's that's the whole point of having a flavor to it is, is to accenting it, bringing it part of it. And you guys really do a great job with that. 